Oh, how fabulous. Hello and welcome to How Fabulous by Tony & Co. I'm Tony and in today's episode, my fabulous guest is Pauline Langmead. Now, Pauline Langmead is the owner of Gale Street Studios over in Brunswick East. And they just happen also to be one of our fabulous sponsors. We'll be filming a lot of the episodes of How Fabulous There. Um, and, and we're so grateful for their support. Now, she is not only a business owner, but she's a shooter, her, a photographer herself. Um, she shoots wonderful product, photography, people, all sorts of stuff. And we talked to her about how she actually got there from her kind of corporate gig um, and how she's made some really significant changes in her life. And I love, I, I, like, I love her story. And she's a deep thinker. She, you can see when she's looking at you, she's really thinking about what you're saying. And I love that, I love that connection. So there it is, Pauline from Gale Street Studios, one of our sponsors, but outside of all that, I just love her story and, and her as a person. So I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed actually talking to her and finding out more about her life and how she lives it. Okay, welcome to How Fabulous by Tony and Co. I'm Tony, and today we have Pauline here. Now, Pauline is the um, owner and boss lady here at Melbourne Photography and Gale Street Studios, who, by the way, this is our first recording ever at the studios. They're one of our major sponsors. I'm so excited and so grateful. Um, uh, at the studios here in Brunswick East. So it's a thing and this lovely lady has made it all happen for us. So we're not sort of um, filming in my backyard. So there's that. Um, <laughs> welcome, Pauline. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Tony. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so Gale Street Studios, so that's where you are now and obviously taking amazing pictures of all sorts of stuff and we'll get to that. But let's go back, 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 back. How did you get into this industry were you always a, a photographer a shooter or mm. how did that work out I'm going to take it back to something that I think is really significant and that is at a time when I just had my second child she's now 11 and I'd stopped working in a primary school as a um, secretary for a primary school and a PA to the assistant. Wait, so this is the first time I'm hearing this. So you're a secretary? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And I, I trained to be a secretary. Primary shorthand. school. Yeah, not shorthand, but um, and a personal assistant and a cook as well. I used to do cooking. Amazing. Yes, uh, but I stopped that. I stopped working at the school. I had my child and I had a moment in Time, you know, you just have those pivotal moments where you're really just questioning what you want to do. Mm. And I did this little process with my sister. It was kind of like a careers counselling kind of thing, but it was like a spiritual direction kind of process. And um, what came from that session was follow your yes. And so I kind of just went inward and found that my yes was photography. And so I went to... Well, had, had you been doing it as a, a hobby? Yeah, I did it was like it? in school and I, you know, have always had photography as one of my major passions, really. Um, and I, I studied at, after high school, I went and studied photography and uh, film and television. But then I had a, and then I had a child at 21. Oh. Wow. Which is normal which is so normal like it's so normal like, like everyone <laughs> has a child at 21 um but that totally changed my life and but so yeah, i did. stopped studying and i became a parent and that was probably the best decision i ever made because it made me who i am today yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. but so forward another 10 years later i had my second child zara and found that my yes was photography. And I just kept following that yes. Like, I'm just gonna apply. I'm just gonna put together a folio. I'm just going to see what happens. And everything just kept being a yes, 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 yes. So I just kept following that. Wow. Um, and I studied photography over five years. So again, so um, after at school, after school, yep. you did the study of photography. Stopped. Then you went into... Because I had a child. And then I started, I was doing catering and I... Was all sorts of like stuff. All sorts of stuff. Taking pictures, taking pictures, taking pictures. Taking pictures, but pictures. it was just for very fun. much. Just for yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I, but you it, knew what you were doing. You'd learned the craft. 
the technical side of things. Yes and no, but that was all analog. Ah, for, oh, Polaroids. Let's have a look at that it. That was all yeah. analog back then. And so I decided to study and I did the diploma of photo imaging over five years. Wow. And then during that five years, this is all in the yes phase. Mm -hmm. During that five years, I started, I was asked to work for a friend of mine who owned Melbourne Photography. And because I was studying, I was like, yeah, for sure, I want to work for a photography company. Because that's a long time to be studying, I mean, a, a subject like that. Yeah. Because, you know, you can do very, you very can, condensed courses and you can do all sorts of stuff. So yeah. to, to make that commitment to go, I'm going to do this particular course for five years and then at the end of five years, I mean, that's, you know, yeah, that's I like being a doctor, over, isn't it? Uh, when I started, I could have done it over two years, but I was working and parenting I had a young like I had a one-year-old when I started oh my goodness so I didn't that's epic. I didn't want to do it full-time I only wanted to do it part-time yeah right okay okay so that was some pretty serious undertaking then so a one-year-old actually felt like my year off oh my gosh because I'd always worked so much up yeah. until then yeah, yeah. Um, that yeah studying just felt like a dream Wow. And so did you go somewhere to do that? Yeah, or was yeah. It, it was that. Yeah, yeah. So, you, so you were, so you would get yeah. coffee maybe, go yeah. on and study. So this is your like downtime. Delightful. From yeah. being, okay, yeah, now yeah, I yeah. understand. Yeah. All right, it's all coming together now. But then now. I yeah. started working for Melbourne Photography, uh, first just assisting and doing administration because I was a secretary and kind of dived in the deep end, working for corporate clients. My whole world became photography. I was ordering. I was... Uh, liaising with other photographers and assisting and I really learnt the world of the business of photography. The business of photography which is quite different to just to taking just photography. some yep. pictures totally. for, that yep. you love. Yeah yep. so I was doing that for a couple of years uh, and just the way that we were working out the business side of um, getting paid I and that wasn't, wasn't working in, out. That wasn't in this It wasn't premise. here at that, that was somewhere point. Else. We, were, we had another we hired another studio, but it was the second floor of a studio. And I remember one point we were doing some stuff for uh, Pacific Brands and we we're getting all this like Everlast gear sent and they were on racks and it was the second floor <gasps> and we couldn't get it up. Like it was just an absolute nightmare. It was a huge um, So that was one of the things like, I have got to find a ground floor studio. Mm. Anyway, I ended up, the situation really wasn't working out with the previous owner. He wasn't really involved very much. I was running the show. I'd started working as in as a photographer taking photos as well. We're doing a lot of events and more sort of corporate stuff. Mm -hmm. um, some product as well, but mostly. And did corporate. you find at that point you were really you really kind of hit your stride? Did you feel like no, you were really not at all? I'm, I'm was, shooting now. I'm well, actually taking real pictures out in the public. People are looking at my stuff and going, "Oh, that's the photographer." Go and talk to the photographer. No, I felt like a fake because I was still studying. Yeah. So I was a student working for big corporate clients and I felt like they might find out that I'm oh, a student, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it was really kind of like exhilarating, but also stressful yeah. because I was still learning. Like, you know, it's just the early days of any kind of profession. I think that mm. it's not, you don't have it. Yeah, it's not back to front yet. It's not. It's not no, ingrained. No, you're still, you're still making mistakes, yeah. you know, and learning from your mistakes and learning from other people and finding out what you're good at and what you're not so good at. So yeah, anyway, yeah. I, so I was working for the business and studying uh, and yeah. Just and parenting in. and just yeah. running around um, and doing events and. It kind of soon worked out that it really wasn't working out financially the way that the structure that we had set up so i said to the owner look either i leave because it's not working for me or i buy the business so i bought the business That's turned it into a company bloody bold thing to do yeah well, okay yeah yeah well i saw it as an opportunity for me to learn like just to learn the ropes and dive in and um rather than kind of build up my personal name Mm. which I didn't really feel like I was strong in having a particular style of photography, like as a sort of, you know, an artist, mm. but that I had some good sort of business skills and that that would be a good way for me to get in the industry and just learn the ropes and meet people, you know, just mm. Mm. get amongst it. 
Um, so that's what I did. Bought the company, um, took over, increased it, you know, in, in the first couple of years. And so what was your, what was the main kind of um, core business client? What, who, who were you uh, going out there to Yeah, it was kind of like a lot of product brands. So I was doing a lot of stuff for, uh, yeah, Pacific Brands and Daiso and a lot of stuff through uh, sort of like the um, Coles, but through another agency that were doing all the stuff for them. Mm -hmm. um, Puma, LinkedIn, yeah, good, like good big brands, like mm, some, mm, yeah, Suncorp, mm. some of the banks and whatever. Um, and then I found this place uh, for as an office. And when I got here, because I needed a ground floor studio and it's also close to home. And I got here and it was kind of quite terrible. Mm, mm. There were two older guys here, kind of dinosaurs. Mm. There was shit everywhere. Mm. Motorbikes. Just old stuff, like these guys have been here for 15 years or something. Yeah. And older, you know, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I don't know what I, I saw. You some, could see, you I could see, could past see some it. kind of potential there. Mm. And it had all these other aspects to it, which I thought could work. Um, so, yeah, I moved in and kind of just snuck in and found my way, my groove and, and took up some space. And, um, and I also learnt from these guys as well. I learnt from this guy, Alan, who uh, ended up retiring and I took over the commercial lease when he left. I learnt from him that product photography is really going to suit me as a form of style of photography mm. because it works with my lifestyle. I can do it during business hours. Um, I can tell it and move it and control it in the studio. Um, and it can work with the family life and it can be quite regular, you can have regular clients. So I learned all of that from him and I took that on board myself and thought, yeah, actually all this evening work or the weekend work, it really doesn't work with my lifestyle. And this is the thing, this is the thing. Had you been in a different um, place in your life, you, would, you maybe would have thought, yeah, actually, I don't want to be doing that. I need to be out and, you know, doing that connection yeah. outside of hours. But yeah. because you were, you know, a mum to two and you wanted to have, I guess, to still be able to sc not scratch the itch of the creativity. But, you know, there's a lot involved with product, pr product photography. You know, it's a really, it is a very technical um, form of photography, isn't it? It's eye for detail. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's 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 reflections and specific and getting down into it and doing yeah. all that sort yeah. of stuff. So you know, but you probably you know, if you had not had children, maybe you would totally have different. chosen something different, yeah. a different Absolutely. kind of style. Yeah. What do you reckon you would have gone for? Um, I don't know, maybe like documentary or travel or nature. Yeah, yeah something I can see you doing more that. More outdoorsy. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. So with people, but still, you know, not you. You wouldn't want to get into fashion no. or things like no. that. That drive me nuts. I think. Yeah. 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 It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> Done a lot of fashion. There's a lot of. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's and and this is a wonderful thing about photography, you know, um, that there are just so many different. Um, people that that do beautiful pictures but across so, so many, many different, different yeah. um, it's so good it, yeah. you know documentary yeah. and and product and, and fashion food and, and food fashion. and beauty yeah. And, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. and that was what i loved as a you know or what i love as a producer is being able to go to match mm. that up and what's my brief oh yeah i know this and then there's mm. a you know that person that does it really mm. well and and not just thinking, yeah, I'm going to get that food photographer in to shoot that car campaign. That would be ridiculous because, you know, you obviously have a really deep connection to what you do. Um, and so, so how long's, how long's um, this studio been going then? So I think I got here maybe seven years ago. And I took over the commercial lease five and a half, nearly six years ago. The six years is coming up in July. Uh, in the first couple of years, I did a my first renovation, my big first overhaul. I did a, um, a business sort of mentorship with someone and yeah, decided, yep, I'm gonna stay. 
I'm going to invest into the space, clean it up, and did the, it's a, it's the a first beautiful. little, you know, stepping stone towards it being its own business. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that was okay. I enjoyed working from the space, which was really awesome. Mm. Um, didn't maybe didn't quite have the legs or the support uh, f for the kind of vibe that I was really after. So it, it did take a little while, a couple of years, I think. Um, for it to find its legs mm. and um but my, that's not unusual for a space it's you know at the end of the day it really is you know hard bricks mortar wood metal all that kind of stuff and you can paint it and you can you know do stuff and set it mm. up but it has to find its own mm. feet and it has to find mm. the people to be in that space uh, doesn't it i liked what you said something about like when the just the way the universe works and bringing people together at the right time that's and I right think that's what's happened here it's about the timing and it's yeah just it's happened mm. um, that the right people have come at the right time my angel in the form of Shelley appeared and we worked together during COVID to do another sort of rebrand overhaul and we came out of lockdown and it's like it just everything clicked. Mm, mm, the mm. vibe was right, the people, the space. We were getting some really great people in the space and it's all just been, uh, it is, we have done m marketing, but it's mostly word of mouth. Yeah, and of course, you know, Sal, Sally Brownbill yep. um, introduced us yep. and we'd met, I feel like it was not last year because COVID, nothing happened. It was at one of the, oh, the Brownbill the drinks. the TBA drinks, yeah. A while ago, but I'd actually never, been here at, in their space yeah. to to shoot or anything and it was because we were actually shooting filming Sal at her house and it just didn't work out and she said I know this amazing um, woman and studio and you know let's just uh, and then it all just kind of and then there was this and that and that is literally how this has grown um, you know how fabulous and other things and I've always found that that is you know when when it's the right time, people will pop up and come in and, you know, you'll find if you listen enough, you will listen, you can hear that mm. yes and you can hear that it's time to, and let's, and just keep propelling yourself forward even though we were talking about it before, you know, it's difficult and it's challenging, you know, because having, you know, having this beautiful space, that's a, that's a big responsibility, no? Totally. You know, a big responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. And then making sure that then there are people to work out of this space is another level on top of that. So you're not only, you know, I look at you and you're not only just, you know, being a photographer, which is what you love doing, but you are a businesswoman and you are a mum and, you know, they're two and huge <laughs> things to be doing, you know, and making it work and making it, you know, making it run really smoothly. Yeah, I do think it takes time. Yeah, it does. And I think also to balance the finding your yes, I think there's also a, a finding your no as well. And in saying no to things that are not serving you, yeah. allows space for more of you to show up. Yeah, and but I, do, you, do you find yeah. that that's easy to do though? I'm really, I think no. I'm quite bad at no. saying no. It's hard sometimes. to say no, Yeah, yeah. but I'm getting better at it. And I'm yeah. seeing the benefits of it. Mm. And I think that, uh, yeah, COVID, that whole year of like just reflection and reflection and, yeah. um, has enabled a stronger yes and a stronger no, absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think it has for me as well. And also it's sort of just moving into, you know, late 40s, early 50s. Which is actually, I shouldn't say it like that, because I'm really happy that yeah. I'm actually still around to be saying I'm, yeah. I'm 50 this year. Um, and I'm not ashamed of it. But, you know, I guess as, as we get older, you kind of, um, you, you have to reconcile in your head what is really important. And for me, and I don't, I'm, I don't know, and I, I want to know from you, you know the most important thing for me so this project's really important my work's really important because I don't have a line between work and play I mean you know it, it, I'm, I feel like I'm always on 
but uh, but all that could just go don't care the main thing in my life that's important is my son mm. and and my husband and my family that's you know what i mean and so so you know like even over covid for example my main concern was making sure that they were okay and fed and warm and we were safe and you know what i mean and you kind of strip it back and go that's what it's all about you know this is all just a little bit of luxury mm -hmm. it's still really really important mm. because it's really important to me but i have you know i feel different my drive is 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 as much but it's in a different way from when i was 20 30 and maybe even you know late 30s because um, i had debt quite late it is a different it is a different way that i look at things you know because i'm I'm in a, just a totally different place in my life, you know, as an older, as an older woman, you know, it's, it's how it is. How, and how do you feel about that? Do you uh, feel different? So when you're saying, yeah, I think during lockdown, I, and also for me, it was a divorce. I discovered that, well, I kind of just woke up one day and this voice just said to me, pay attention to your inner strength. And my internal kind of world became my number one priority mm. and it still is to mm. this day that became mm. my most important thing and mm. because i've always given i've always been a person of service i've always given back you know wanting to inspire mm. people and you know do great things but um it needs to be a um, rejuvenating cycle that mm. where I give to myself and I can then give back mm. um, so to inspire the inspired a beautiful way of you know in nurturing the internal world mm. as well mm. um, because it needs to be sustainable like and we're talking about su thing. sustainability before yeah. and so last year like I lost heaps of weight I got str I've never been so strong in my life I've it's been <gasps> did athlete. you start the gym or what happened I did started you? doing Sam Woods which is like this home program <gasps> is that the guy from he's like famous he, from the bachelor, the bachelor or yeah, something yeah 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 yeah, yeah and it right. was, it's this at home program i did it with my sister and my daughter who were also living at home so we were all doing it together during lockdown and we're up to like week 48 so we've nearly been doing it for a year 11 months um it's been absolutely incredible Wow, what, so what is it? Exercise? Exercise, yeah, work plus, out every day. Plus food. Like do, do some kind of exercise every day yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and diet. Yeah, yeah, just healthy. Healthy and good this stuff. Is, so here's the thing. So when I was younger, I actually didn't really take care of myself, um, you know, physically mm. that well because, I don't know, it just wasn't an important thing that I, it, I'd never had been sporty and I never liked gyms and so there was that and I really liked going out and you know I've been working for myself for 20 years so you know it was always that first before my physical and well-being but over COVID I started running and I also started stretching and I started eating differently and it was just it was a whole thing and I went oh, why didn't I start this earlier you know and you know you 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 started you know a little bit later because as well. for the first time in my life i had the time to there it is. give yeah everything stopped i wasn't allowed to work i wasn't yeah. permitted to work i had to stop yeah i also had like a meltdown as well yeah yeah and now i'm not going back <laughs> yeah because and you've tasted the well you've seen how good feeling healthy yeah and actually moving your body can yeah. be and yeah. i did that and like, how much of an influence it is for my kids too like i know last week amazing. my daughter got up and did three workouts with me she got oh. up half an hour earlier just to do yoga that's fantastic she's 11. i love you know? that i love that yeah love and my that. daughter my eldest daughter she's lost like nearly 20 kilos what stop sam Wo okay let's have a look at sam woods then <laughs> i know that's it that's a real thing he must be huge yeah yeah. He did well over COVID, I think. Yeah, I think there were a lot of people that actually did well, well over COVID doing one, stuff. Yeah, that's right. I mm. mean, it was just this whole reevaluation of yeah. of priorities and yeah. and all it took was a world pandemic <laughs> for a lot of people to start doing things mm. really, really differently mm. and to have a little quick check mm. inside your brain and your 
body and, and go, heart. Oh, I'm going to and yeah, you know, and do things differently. Yeah, what's really important here? Yeah, mm. well, that's that's the thing. Yeah, that's incredible. And so you've kept it up. I mean, because you know that wasn't just a mm, stop. You know, a twelve-week thingy. This was a my lifestyle has changed. Yeah. And so with that, your I guess your whole. Um, mental outlook has changed as well. I mean, because going through a divorce is, I can't even horrific. imagine. It's horrific. Yeah. I've had a couple of friends who have, you know, gone through yeah. uh, uh, um, terrible breakups over COVID, um, throughout COVID. And it's just a really, it's heart wrenching because, you know, unless you're in that situation, everyone thinks, oh God, thank God it's not me, oh my yeah, God. Because totally. it's, just, it's, just, yeah. it's, just a, it's just everything, yeah. you know, it's yeah, heart-wrenching, it's, a whole, world. it's yeah. a whole world. So sort of, um, yeah, that happened, but then COVID happened, lockdown, and so I feel like I got the seven month sabbatical that my soul was desperately needing. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So you had a little bit of rest and yeah. you had some time to recuperate. Yeah. yeah. And, and grieve and just go through that process yeah. and go through it. Because yeah. that's a that's a really yeah. that's a really important part. And I think this is an interesting thing. I remember when um, just about grieving and someone to be morbid, but when my dad well my he was my stepdad and um, but he basically raised me um, when since I was six. He passed away and it was just the most, um, you know, uh, just, I've never experienced grief of a parent um, and someone that I loved so much. And it was just, a, it was a, a, a truly, I can't even find a word for it. It was an overwhelming, shocking, really sad, sad time. And I remember thinking, nobody knows how to deal with me. Nobody knows what to say. No one knows what to do when you're grieving. And I would imagine going through a divorce, you know, going through a divorce, having someone die, and there's, an, I think it's maybe moving or something moving like that. Or something, yeah. There's three things that are just really intense mm. in your mm. life. And I remember someone saying to me, because, you know, I'd be walking around and I'd be crying. And I couldn't stop crying. Like, I just couldn't get my shit together. You know what I mean? I just couldn't for months. And people were really awkward around mm. it. I don't know what to say, mm. you know, and it's, I would imagine that's the sort of same thing because you just feel so fucking raw and that's what it is. It's, it's a different type of grief, but it's grief nonetheless. Um, and I found that really interesting and it changed my way of being able to connect with other people who had, had lost someone in the way that I had never totally. understood before. Yep. And, and we'll never forget. Yeah. And I'll never forget I the, the kindness of strangers for me. I remember just, just I was on a seat on the on the um, footpath and I just broke down and I, I, I was like, oh my God, I can't. But it was overwhelming. Mm. And this this woman just came up and put her arm around me. <laughs> you had gay laugh and I was like, dead. <laughs> and you know, I can talk about it now. This is like eight years later, seven or eight years later, I can't remember. But, it was that, mm. you know, you find people when you least expect it and they come into your life and you, you know, they can help you in lots of different ways. Yes. You know, um, yeah, so um, dear Shelley moved in in February. And, and she's, your she, guard, she's your angel. She's, she's your just person. become my angel. Yeah. Uh, who has made the whole revamp of Girl Street Studios effortless. Oh, see, there you are. That's nice. And that's why I keep going with it, because it just feels like a yes, like, of course. What, you know, yeah. when Sally said, oh, you've got to speak to Tony, I was like, of course, I'm speaking to Tony, and I'll do anything, oh, because it. it's a yes. Like, it comes yeah. from, it stems from that. Yeah. Yeah. And only good can come from that, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, it's, and, and that's the thing. Like, I feel really... Um, humbled and grateful that you know here we are uh, you know six months ago this was not even a thing and I was it was it'd been bouncing around in my head for a few years but I always get too busy and the work and the blah 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 and then I went oh stuff it I'll just do it and it'll be clumsy and it'll be not quite right um, and 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 never for a minute thinking you know fast forward you would come on board and 
say hey yes let's do this and that's just so wild and then like let's talk about this in a year and see what's happened I love it I love how the universe works yeah. it's amazing yeah when you're open to it yeah. to noticing yeah there it is because you yeah. do there is an element of listening isn't there yeah and, and you can yeah, that can all be happening around you but yeah it's not like um I also don't think it's not luck necessarily. I think it's there's some preparation when preparation, uh, what's that saying? When preparation meets opportunity, mm. there's that as well. You know, we're talking about this before, Hattie. It's not like you're manifesting, yeah, something. There, there is you are involved in that process. Mm. It's not like the universe, it's not just the universe doing its thing, you have a part to play in that as well. I think that's what I'm saying. Mm. Yeah, mm. you do have to put one foot forward in front of the other because nothing changes if nothing changes yeah. you know I often say that to my son nothing changes if nothing changes he goes what <laughs> go, well it's you know you'll understand and it'll be that um and so so what what do you I mean if you were to sort of to actually think five years ahead what would what would Pauline be doing what do you hmm. what do you reckon you're going to be doing Will you be one of the first people that can have a quick scoot overseas and explore again? Maybe. I, it's interesting, I'm just about to start uh, to sign the lease again for Gale Street Studios. I'm just in the throes of negotiating with the um, landlord here. And I would imagine that I'd be producing with a team, so less, a little bit less on the tools in terms of photography, um, but a little bit more working in teams with incredible people doing wonderful things for the world, particularly in the sustainable, you know, um, world, realm. Yeah, yeah, realm. Um, but I do want to go a little bit more into um, producing. I want to make cool stuff happen. That's what producing is, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty much. Just get it done, just sort that shit out. <laughs> With other cool people. Yeah. I think I've worked a lot on my own and I'm ready to work more with others. Yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, this is a thing, you know, like you have to, there's a certain amount you can do on your own and it's great. It's great to have quiet time and to be able to um, do what you want to do. But the best things happen, I reckon, when you've got a team of people mm. and like-minded mm people mm. that do support because you know even just bouncing ideas I know if I'm doing you know I'm crafting something up or whatever it might be any of the jobs that I work on it's always good to have that someone else to bounce ideas off you know even if it's just Phil and my husband um, you know he's in a totally 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 different industry from me completely not or creative in a different way but more of a technical way um, and so I really love being able to just, you know, pick up the phone to sell or pick up the phone to a, another stylist or, a, you know, whatever it might be and go, oh, blah, 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 or talk about ideas, you know, b you know, and working in different, um, across different industries mm. gives me that sort of, oh, yeah, we could do that, you know, like... I'm looking forward to being able to, you know, do our little fashion stuff going on right here and see where that, you know, what happens there with all the people that we bring in here mm. to be able to to um, show them themselves in a different way. You know, that's one of our little projects that we were going to do. So um, lots of stuff happening, lots of stuff happening. So anyway, so... So we will no doubt talk again because, like, we're going to be here a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> um, and we would love you to just pop in and, you know, tell us more every now and then because, A, you will be here anyway. Yep, Because, absolutely. like, you live here. Yeah, because, yeah, like, you own yeah, it. Pretty much. Um, but you're a really interesting person as well and obviously doing amazing things. And um, I think that there's lots that we can even learn from what you have to offer just here. I mean, just helping out this morning with diffusing, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> We're still, I'm still learning. I'm usually on the other side and just having people do it. I'm usually on the other side. Yeah, and Paul yeah. Lisa usually on the other yeah. side. We've flipped it. We've reversed we, it. We've flipped it. We're oh. freaking out. Yeah. Freaking out. 
<laughs> uh, but anyway, thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. And um, we'll see you again. Yay.